Hello, this is Katrina Stevenson, CEO of the Local Government Association of Tasmania, and this presentation will provide you some basic information about your campaign. One of the reasons that we run our candidate information sessions early and get this material up early is to give you time to plan and prepare your campaign. You need to get out early. It's important to build a profile in your local community. In doing that, you must first decide what is the message that you want to communicate about yourself, about your skills and about what you'd like to achieve on council and then think about the best way to do that. It will likely involve a range of different approaches, including advertising, posters and brochures, door knocking and the use of media such as letters to the editor. On this last one, I would advise that you be selective and careful in your approach so that you don't appear to have a particular bias when it elected to council and having to make decisions. I would also suggest that you make sure you have a contemporary photograph rather than just use an old one. As you are aware, local government elections are conducted by postal ballot. You do have the opportunity to provide a written candidate statement to go with the ballot papers. This is optional but as it is often the most detailed information a ratepayer will receive before they cast their vote, they are really important and well worth considering. You do, however, only get 600 characters in which to cast your message, so I advise you to write tightly and test your statement with family and friends. Does it represent your priorities and your skills well? Candidate statements are lodged via the Tasmanian Electoral Commission website. They appear in alphabetical order in the ballot packs. There are some constraints on what you can include in your candidate statement. For example, you must not mention another candidate without their written consent. You cannot say that you are a JP. You must not refer to gifts, donations or prizes. Because candidate statements are quite short, you might also want to think about submitting a web link for publication on the TEC website that takes an interested voter to more information about you, your priorities and your skills. Along with your candidate statements, you can supply a photo, although this is also optional. However, people do tend to connect with a face rather than just lines of text. If you do supply a photo, make sure it's recent. It must be a head and shoulders shot on a neutral background. It will be published in black and white, so make sure that your photo works in that context. And you submit it online using the candidate statement form on the Tasmania Ele Electoral Commission website. In undertaking your campaign, particularly with respect to advertising, it is important to understand there are some limitations and some offences under legislation. Firstly, it is an offence to distribute electoral advertising which contains the name, photograph or likeness of a candidate without their written consent. You must also make sure that your printed or published election advertising materials are fully authorised the Tasmanian Electoral Commission website provides you detail on the form the authorisation should take. If you are a current councillor, you cannot use council logos or arms in your materials. This also applies to those who aren't on council, although obviously far less likely for them to do that. You need to also understand that any candidate is taken to have incurred the total time and space of an advertisement, even if they're also promoting another candidate. This is important in the context of spend and time limits, which I'll talk about next. Limits on electoral advertising, time and space are outlined in the Local Government General Regulations 2015. 
it is important to note that these regulations are currently being reviewed and may be changed prior to the election. To check the most up-to-date provisions, I suggest you go to www.legislation.tas.gov.au and look at the regulations directly. However, at this time, total expenditure on advertising space and time by or on behalf of a councillor is limited to $5,000 for councillor candidates or $8,000 for mayoral or deputy mayoral candidates. In terms of space and time, there are also constraints. You can only have 10 minutes on television, 50 minutes of radio, no more than two pages in the daily newspaper in a municipal area, or in five pages in any other newspaper circulating in the state. You must consider the limits on spend and space and time collectively. There are provisions constraining the display of posters and signs within the Local Government Regulations 2015. In brief, the regulations allow for a maximum poster size of 3 metres squared, or a maximum group size of 3 metres squared. A group is constituted when posters or signs are placed within 10 metres of each other. You are not allowed to display more than 50 posters or signs. You also need to check your local planning scheme, as some schemes will require a permit for any posters over one metre squared. They also tell you when you can put up your signs without a permit and when they must come down by. The requirements under the planning scheme do vary currently from municipality to municipality, so check with your council. And finally, having run your campaign, it's important that you know that you are also required to lodge an advertising return with the Tasmanian Electoral Commission within 45 days of the issue of the Certificate of Election. It is an offence not to do so. The Candidate Information Booklet developed by the Tasmanian Electoral Commission provides an example of an advertising return. And with all the information in this presentation, much more detail is available in that booklet. In your advertising return, you must declare the time and spend on TV and radio, the space and spend in newspapers. You also must declare internet advertising and the maximum size and total number of signs and posters. With all these restrictions on advertising and requirements, I can tell you that there is no restriction on number and cost of properly authorised leaflets or pamphlets. I hope this has been helpful. I encourage you to explore the detail at the Tasmanian Electoral Commission and I wish you luck in your campaign.